five-time world karate kickboxing champion, Anthony Alf Oldmore from Memphis, Tennessee. This video is titled, First Kickboxing Film, The Contemporary Gladiator Connected to James Bellman and the Civil Rights Movement. You see, in 2023, a sports drama film was made called Creed Three. The film was directed and starred Michael B. Jordan. They had a $75 million budget. And what is exciting to know is that Creed Three is a black film starring and produced by Michael B. Jordan, a black man. You see, the year Michael B. Jordan was born, in 1987, we in Memphis, Tennessee, wrote, produced, directed, and starred in the first kickboxing film in world history. We are the first writer, producer, director of the first independent theatrical film made in Memphis film history. You see, now, in the movie, The Contemporary Gladiator, this was a kickboxing movie that's equal to Creed. See, the movie Creed was entertaining. Now, in the 1988 film, The Contemporary Gladiator, there is an early scene in the movie that represents my life. In our movie, the film does not go into detail, but that is a character in the movie played by the Africa and April founder, Dr. David Ace, who plays the role of Reverend. Now, Reverend in the movie is actually Reverend James Bevel, one of the greatest leaders in the civil rights history in America. Now, you see, in July of 2022, the White House announced that Dana Nash would be awarded one of the most significant awards in the world, in America. She was awarded the United States Medal of Freedom. You see, now, what I want you to do, I want you to look at this here. This is a June 1963 issue of Jet Magazine, whereas you see Dana Nash, the 2022 recipient of the Presidential Freedom Award, you see her with her husband at the time. Now this is June 1963 with Reverend James Bevel. Now in this picture Jet Magazine, they both had got were just released from prison to see their baby because they were in prison in Mississippi fighting for the cause of freedom and justice for black people. Now, Reverend James Bevel, Dana Nash, John Lewis, Marion Barry, and others integrated restaurants, movie theaters, and they started the freedom rides in Mississippi. Even more significant to Dana Nash is the work of James Bevel. You see, Bevel joined the SCLC in 1962, and he did this as an equal partner to Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, you see, what I did not realize is that Belleville was the trainer of those people in the movement. He went out and trained people and conditioned them and told them about the movement of passive resistance. It was James Bevel who did his work. Now, what I want you to see, and I want you to look at, I want you to look at pictures that was taken in May of 1963, where James Bevel led one of the most significant protest movements in American history. You see, in 1963, they did protests in Alabama and all the people at the time, you see, because of the killing, the raping, the burning, the Ku Klux Klan, black people could not do things in Alabama. However, James Bevel came up with a brilliant idea. 
and that he used children to fight for the cause of civil rights. Now, what I want you to see, and then you probably have seen these pictures on the news, but you may not have realized that in these pictures of Alabama are youth. You see, youth who were high school students, even youth as, 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 as low as six years old, they fought in the civil rights movement. Now what happened was, the youth were doing peaceful protests and Bull Connor, the police officer in Alabama, put water holes and dogs and they intimidated people doing peaceful protests and they put water holes on little bitty children. Now, what you see and what Bull Connor did was, on the news, everybody could see these little kids marching. They had thousands of youth put in jail in Alabama, and they put all these youth in jail for protesting for just protesting for civil rights. And what happened was, on the TV and over the world, everybody saw the brutality that Bull Connor was committing against the constitutional rights of people who had a right to protest for civil rights. It was President John F. Kennedy who sent the National Guard to Alabama to protect these young people and their right to protest for civil rights in Alabama. And this was over the news. This is what helped change the civil rights movement because the federal government had to come in and protect peaceful protesters and what you see in Alabama it was called the children's crusade where children were used to help fight for civil rights now this is in May of 1963 now let's move to August 28 1963 where we had the march on Washington now during the march on Washington is the time when Dr. Martin Luther King made his famous I Have a Dream speech. Now, let's move to November, I think November 22nd, 1963. Just three months after Dr. Martin Luther King had his I Have a Dream speech, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. So this is this is November of 1963. Now, let's move on. You see, we can move now to James Velvet in 1965. You see, there was a march from Selma to Montgomery. And this was in Alabama where James Velvet was the brainchild of this march. Now, this march is known as Bloody Sunday. Whereas peaceful marchers were crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Now this, this is in 1965, and they were met with harsh brutality, where the state troopers beat up and brutally beat peaceful protesters, and this happened in Alabama. Now this was called the March from Selma to Montgomery. Now, what I want you to look at is that in 2014, there was a movie made called Selma. And in the movie, it tells about the march over the Edmund Pettus Bridge in the movie Selma. Selma. Now, it was the brainchild of Reverend James Belville who organized, who put together this historic march in 1965. Now, we move to 1966. In 1966, James Bevel led the march in Chicago for fair housing to have it where children can be protected to get rid of the slums in Chicago. This is in 1966 when James Bevel led this march. Now, James Bevel, because of what he did in Chicago, in 1968, they passed the fair Housing Act. Now, let's move to 1967. In 1967, Reverend James Belville led the most 
the most sought out or the most uh, uh, significant march against the Vietnam War. In fact, on April 4th, one year before Dr. Ronald Luther King got killed at Riverside Baptist Church, Dr. Martin Luther King and the SCLC came up against, or came out against the Vietnam War where the SCLC and Dr. King and James Bevel, they led some of the greatest and largest protests against the Vietnam War. And it was James Bevel who put this on. Now, in 1968, when Dr. King got assassinated, James Belville went on a sabbatical and you didn't hear no more from James Belville for a while. He left the SCLC in 1969. He went into sabbatical. He went into meditation to see what he was gonna do. Now, what happened was, we moved now into 19, 71. In 1971, I had graduated high school and I had started taking classes at the Dean Memphis State, which is now the University of Memphis. It was in 1971, I was an 18-year-old college student where I met Reverend James Bevel, who had led some of the some of the most fundamental and important marches in the civil rights era that ever happened. Now, in 1972, I remember that we went to the first political convention in the world, the Black Political Convention. This is, I think, March 11, 1972. I went with James Belvo and I was a delegate of the first Black Political Convention that was held in America, where you would see Jesse Jackson and all the leaders in black history at the first black political convention. Now, what happened was, I, Bevel also had, it, had a reputation of being a ladies man, and he did, you know, he, his story is not told because of that reputation that he had and the things he did with women. In fact, I remember some of the things that we did in Memphis, Tennessee, because on Horn Lake Road, I remember the time when they had, uh, you can go down to the house on Horn Lake Road and after the movie days were over, everybody would be naked and acting like we're in Africa. And it was, uh, it was just the way that Bevel ran things in terms of being free and being this person who he was, he was a very unique character. Certain people in the book, Think and Grow Rich, there's a story that talks about sexual transmutations. There are certain people that have a quality of a sexual quality to where they attract people. Dr. Martin Luther King attracted a group of people. Ministers have it, pimps have it, and James Bevel was no different. He can go into a town and galvanize a community to stand up and protest. But along with that was his strong sexual desire. And so James Belleville developed a negative reputation and his story is not told in world history. Now, we come to my life and that I met my first girlfriend at a Bevel meeting and her name was Cherie. And what happened was Bevel called Cherie and tried to get Cherie, who was in high school at the time, I was in college, she was in high school, and Bevel told her to stay out of school, to do the nasty and da 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 da. You know. But anyway, to make a long story short, my girlfriend was was incensed about it. She was angered, she was angered by it, and she felt insulted. Me, I was a disciple of Bevel and I didn't say very much, but she told me. I will never go to a Bevel meeting again, and if you go, me and you are through. So at that time, I left James Bevel being my master and disciple. However, it was in 1988 where I wrote, produced, directed, and starred 
and a film about my life. Now, my film is called The Contemporary Gladiator. Now, in the movie The Contemporary Gladiator, what I did was I told the story of Reverend James Bell. First of all, I want you to see a video of Reverend James Melville. Let's look at the video first. This is King's Autobiography. Our direct action department under the direction of Reverend James Bevel then decided to attack the very heart of the political structure of the state of Alabama and the Southland through a campaign for the right to vote. And when Johnson made his speech on January, June, March the 15th, that was probably the most, most thankful moment that I've experienced. That, and because, see, that has never, that, what he said, has been done by only three men in history, Moses, Gandhi, and James Bevel, who enfranchise a people without armed struggle. And I'm, I'm very grateful that God used me in that way. I am very thankful, you know, that, that God took this fellow and allowed him to be instrumental in enfranchising the people without murder. You know, see, cause we could have gone down Taliban, PLO, Hamas, they went down a route. America could be in chaos. But we went down a route that brought the Christ principle to consciousness. Reverend James Bellwell is one of the first men in history to actually organize a peaceful revolution where people got voting rights without having violence. This is historic. His story should be told. Now, in 1988, when I wrote, produced, directed, and released my movie called The Contemporary Gladiator, I told the story where I meet Reverend James Belmore, and I tell the story that I never saw anything like this, and he said, stick with me, I'll teach you more in two months than you learn in two years at that university. I quit college, joined the Rebel Movement, and in my 1988 film, I'm the first person to tell the story of one of the greatest civil rights leaders in the world to include him into a movie, and you see the story of Reverend James Bevel. Let's close with watching a scene where I meet Reverend Bevel, I go to a meeting, and this is a part of our 1988 movie, The Contemporary Gladiator. Brothers and sisters, we must in two years at the university. Stick with me and God bless you for coming.